Muslims today are labeled as terrorists. Many a times, two different labels are given for the same activity of that same individual. About 60, 70 years ago, before India got its freedom, the country where I come from, the Britishers were ruling India. There were many Indians who were fighting for the freedom of the country. These people, by the British government, they were called as terrorists. But the common Indians, we call them as freedom fighters, as patriots. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. If you agree with the view of the British government that they had a right to rule over India, then you have to call these people as terrorists. But if you agree with the view of the common Indians that the Britishers came to India to do business, they have no right to rule over us, then you'll have to call these people as patriots, as freedom fighters. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. And such examples, you can give multiple such examples in world history. A Dai should know if there are many examples, which example should you use where? So that he understands. Because Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 64, Ta'ala wila kalmitin sawa im bainakum. Come to common terms as in us and you. The moment the Indians, when they call Muslim terrorists, and when I give this example, then they understand the picture better. Two months back, I was in UK, after the bomb blast, after 7th of July. There's supposed to be a grand conference. Tony Blair, Jack Tor was supposed to come. Last moment, they didn't come. But the chief of police was there, the mayor was there. And there also I used the example. But my examples were different. I said that in the 18th century, we know of the American Revolution. The Britishers were ruling America. There were many Americans who were fighting for the freedom. In 1776, they got the freedom. And top of the line were Benjamin Franklin, George Washington. They were called as terrorist number one by the British government. The person who was terrorist number one, George Washington, later on, he becomes the president of USA. Imagine terrorist number one becomes the president of USA. And he is an example for all the presidents to follow, including George Bush. This is media. Terrorist number one becomes the president of the country which we look up upon. USA! USA's name come most advanced country in the world. Who was the person who was the first president? A terrorist. <laughs> we have the example of Nelson Mandela. Before new South Africa was formed, South Africa was relieved from the white apartheid government. Nelson Mandela, by the white apartheid government, he was imprisoned for 25 years in Robben Islands. He was called as terrorist number one. Later on, when South Africa gets its freedom from the white apartheid government, he is made the president of New South Africa. And later on, he gets the Nobel Prize for Peace. And he doesn't get a Nobel Prize for Peace for a new activity. Not that he was a terrorist first and then he did some good activities and a bad person has become a good person. No, no. For the same activity for which he was called a terrorist, after a few years, he gets a Nobel Prize for Peace. It is weird. Same activity for which he was imprisoned for 25 years. He was called as terrorist. For the same activity later on, he gets the Nobel Prize for Peace. So this is how the media can convert day into night, black into white, hero into a villain, and a villain into a hero. In short, whoever is in power, whatever he says, turns out to be the gospel truth. We know when Hitler was invading Europe, many countries were resisting. Even France, they resisted. These French people, by the Germans, they were called as terrorists. This is how the media paints a picture. Unfortunately, we Muslims, unfortunately, we are way behind. We should know how to turn the tables over. 